Hello, Mr. Wright here doing lesson two for clarinet, the right band method. For this lesson, you'll need to get your reed out of your little reed case, the little plastic case out of your reed, out of your clarinet case. And then you'll also need to get a little cup of water, maybe. It'll make it work better. If you can, sometimes if you don't have a cup of water, you can just run it under the sink for about a minute or two. I like to let it soak in a little cup of water for about two minutes, when I'm, especially when I'm first getting a reed out out of the wrapper and everything, a brand new one. And then you'll also need your clarinet mouthpiece with a ligature, the little metal piece that goes with it like that. And then you'll need your barrel. Now, uh, on this little lesson right here, I showed you, there's the, the reed and the, the cup of water. And I basically, I'm putting cork grease on this little cork tenon right here so that uh, they will go together easier. You don't want it to be all dried out and then mashed together because sometimes that can tear up the cork right here. We don't want that. So we're going to put our mouthpiece on the barrel joint like so, and then we're going to make our clarinet reed and our ligature look like this. So I'm going to go ahead and um, take my reed out of the water, wipe off a little bit of excess water here, and I'm going to lay the reed on the table, the flat spot of the mouthpiece with the tip pointing toward the tip of the mouthpiece. Then I'm going to put the ligature and I've got this, because it's wet, it's sticking to it. I've got it to where you can just see a little small thin line of the black mouthpiece over um, the reed. Maybe I'll use my shiny forehead so you can see that little thin line of black right over it. In the picture, you can see it more clearly. See this little line of the black mouthpiece right over that reed. That's what you want. And so now we're going to put the ligature on there and I'm going to loosen up these screws so that I can get the ligature low enough. You know, sometimes that bumps around the reed. So you got to put the reed back in the right spot. It's kind of a little balancing act here, getting everything in the right place. And when it looks good, I'm going to tighten down the ligature screws, but don't tighten it down too much just to where it's kind of snug, both screws. And by the way, if you ever do it too hard and it snaps, uh, you can take, the uh, say you, you snap your top ligature screw, back it out, take the one from the bottom, use it on the top, and it'll still kind of get you through the day. Um, it's best not to do that, but it'll get you by in a pinch. So I've got my ligature, my reed in place, everything just as it is in the picture. And um, now we're going to try to get a sound on just the mouthpiece and the barrel joint. And this is super important to practice this in the beginning so we can get a good understanding of how to form our embouchure, our opening of our mouth. To do this, we're going to roll the bottom lip under just a little bit, just enough to cover the bottom teeth. You don't want to go like that because it'll be rolled up so much that the whole reed will be covered by your lip. Then the reed will not be able to vibrate. <clears throat> Excuse me. So just a little bit, just enough to serve as a little pad between your teeth <clears throat> and the reed. And then we're going to put our two top teeth right on top of the mouthpiece. You're not going to roll your upper lip under, you're going to base, just set your two top teeth right here onto the, on the reed. You might say, well, how much of the mouthpiece do I put in my mouth? Well, I'm going to slide this little piece of paper right in there. And you can see about how much where the, the reed and the clarinet mouthpiece meet. That's about how much is going to go inside of our mouth. All right? So, I'm going to put my teeth right there and I'm going to kind of seal off the sides. Also, I'm going to firm these muscles up here on the corners to seal off any air from leaking out of the side. So bottom lip under. And also when we start a note, I'm going to take my bottom, my tongue, and I'm going to go ta, 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 just very lightly, just the tip of my tongue, just going ta, ta, ta. So bottom lip under just a little bit, two top teeth on the mouthpiece, sealing off on the side. And I'm going to use my tongue on the reed. Right? And I just, a good burst of air, just touching the tongue lightly to the reed. And you don't want to clamp down on the reed, especially on the end of the reed. If there's not, if you're going like this, and what you're doing is clamping the reed off. So you have to have enough inside of your mouth like that so that this can vibrate. So you're sealing off from the sides of the reed, right on the sides, so that the center can hopefully vibrate. But you got to put a little pressure 
from right through here also. So it's <clears throat> pressure, you're sealing it off. So bottom up under like that, two top teeth. And if you're getting a sound that does like this, duh, 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 that means you're starting off with a weak embouchure and then slowly building it up. It needs to start firm from the very beginning, from the attack of the note, and then just and you want your all of this, all of this, you want to flex all of your muscles, all of your lips up against the teeth so that your chin is almost point it so it is pointed, right? Maybe you saw the movie Megamind like that when he had a pointed chin, the big blue head. So you want it nice and pointed, just like that. I just took my tongue and went ta 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 ta. I kept the air flowing. I don't go to 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 to. I just keep the air, the diaphragm pump down here is just going. But I'm just interrupting that constant airstream with just a light tongue. Right. So it makes it a lot easier if you just use your tongue to start the note. Don't go who, who, who the whole time. Don't want to do that. So remember this. Always keep all of this flexed up against your teeth so that it'll be out of the way. And notice the angle. I don't have the clarinet mouthpiece up here. It's angled down. And if you do have a squeak, that means that air is leaking out of the sides. of the, So you want to make sure that you're with the corners of your mouth right here and here that you're sealing off the sides of this mouthpiece. If you're getting a squeak, maybe you've got too much mouthpiece in your mouth. So you just back it out a little bit to where you can control the sound. And again, if you're not getting any sound at all, uh, it might be that you've clamped off the reed. It could be that also that the reed is very, very dry. Uh, it's good to start, <clears throat> start off with like a number two and a half reed or a Van Doren two. Um, and just so it's not so hard. And, and again, soaking the reed before you start will also help a lot. Now, let's go down here to, and it may take some experimentation. On my trombone, the first night I got my trombone, it took me four hours to get a good sound. I just worked on it for four hours and I finally got it. So in exercise number one right here, that note I was playing is good very close to this little pitch right here. It's a G. Now in lesson one, we covered what the, what was the low G, second line from the bottom, but this is an octave higher transposed. This note they're playing is transposed for like the fully assembled clarinet. So here's your high G and uh, <clears throat> it's a whole note like we discussed in lesson one, then a half note G followed by a half note rest and so forth. And over here, we've got quarter notes. They're solid on the inside with a stem. So these are only one beat a piece. So let's try this, this whole note for four beats. This is two beats, two beat rest, two beats, two beats, two beats, two beat rest, then quarter, quarter, half note, like so. Let's try this one, one. And I'm gonna turn my microphone down so that it doesn't blare, blast you out. I'm sorry, I probably did that already. But here we go, one, two, three. Three, four. Three, four. Hopefully that wasn't too loud. And then number two, we've got quarter, quarter, half note, quarter, quarter, half note, like that, right? <clears throat> One, two, three. notice that my I'm very very still I've had some clarinet students they'll go you, know, you got to hold it still because uh, otherwise you'll get it'll sound like somebody's beating a puppy so you want to make it sound nice and solid you want to have your embouchure firm and set from the beginning okay very firm very still and uh, sometimes people get frustrated and they're like no 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 just relax and think about what you're doing. Think, ah, maybe I've got, you know, too little mouthpiece in my mouth. I need to put just a little bit more. If it gets a squeak, oh, 
a little bit too much, back out a little bit. It's kind of a balancing act of getting just enough. And you'll, you'll get to where you can feel how much is supposed to be in there. And also reeds, after you use them for, if you play a lot, uh, after a while, they will get worn out. That means they'll, they'll just, instead of standing away from the mouthpiece, they'll kind of collapse in because of the pressure you're putting and it just kind of collapses. Now, this takes a lot of time, though. Uh, if you're playing every day for 30 minutes, an hour, uh, it might, it'll wear out a reed about like in a month. So don't like, oh, I've played a long time today. I've wore out this reed. No, 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 no. Don't waste your parents' money or your money. So uh, take care of your reed. And when you finish with your reed, you want to dry it out and put it back in that case. I'm going to take it. I'm going to wipe it off. And I'm going to slide it back carefully into that case. Be careful with the tip. You know, most reeds cost about uh, $2 or more. So you want to take care of them. They're expensive. So, and then you want to also clean out the inside with your swab. You know, you always want to swab from the, the bell to the mouthpiece because most of the condensation is uh, the water droplets collect up here toward the beginning where you're blowing the most. <clears throat> so hopefully that'll get you started with lesson two for the clarinet.